Hi team, welcome to the Escape Podcast for Star Wars The Old Republic. Coming up, we talk about the June Producers live stream. But first, a couple bits of news and a shout out to our guild, Alea Yacht Est on Jedi Covenant. Our broadcast astromech today is EPC 146. Have fun in the Escape Pod, buddy, and break a leg. Why did I say break a leg? Uh, because I find it humorous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Mal for... <laughs> yeah. Yes. For that joke earlier in Guild Now came tonight. to uh, our mandatory fun night tonight, and that was the humor he brought with him. Yes. With me, as always, is Seema. Hi, Seema. How is it going? Hi, Max. Hi, chat room. Hi, everyone. It's going great. I I I did a thing that made me unreasonably happy, which I purchased the the new extra tab for my legacy cargo hold, and I haven't put anything in it yet. So it's like just empty full of so much storage potential yes yeah i don't know what i'm gonna put in it but yeah i don't I know it. either i did the same thing nothing in it but i'm so glad i have it and i did do the alert for uh you know the new alliance alert that came with this current chapter and i actually oh i did the chapter too but um yeah maybe we'll talk about that more in another episode i don't want to give anything away but yeah interesting that's a thing. And also right now I have quite the menagerie in my house because I'm taking care of a, a a dog that belongs to a friend of mine. And I have the new kitten and I have vanilla cat. And they're all getting along as long as they're in separate rooms. You said that earlier, vanilla cat. Is the other cat's act name actually vanilla or? <laughs> no, I call her vanilla cat because she's the original cat. Oh. <laughs> but her like, name is actually like Rosie. Bow. Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the kitten is x -Pac. <laughs> but his name is actually Max. <laughs> that is awesome. I do not have any cats or dogs. Uh, although I, I would, I, I grew up with dogs. I'm a dog person. I would get a dog, but I don't have any dogs at the moment. What I do have is my character who was in Mandatory Fun Night tonight. I did a little bit of DPSing, and then we had to swap out a tank, so I did some tanking. We had a hilarious time in Mandatory Fun Night. Did not finish 16-person Terror from Beyond because we we were short on people and did some crazy, <laughs> crazy things for Operator 9. We uh, Yes, we did. People people weren't used to it, and somebody missed a color. And so then it like killed half the, the operation when we missed a color, so, which was fine. Then we were, kept kept going and kept going, and each round we would another another couple people would die and another couple people would die. It was like that thing where, you know, you lose half and then you lose half of that and then lose half of that and half of that. It would seem like the last person might just stand forever, right. but then no. It was. And we were like killing half of the remaining health of the boss each time as well. So it was sort of like a, a Zeno's paradox of, of, of a boss. Yes, boss. exactly. It just wasn't going to happen. And, and we did not complete it. In fact, we went from the, the first blast killed everybody at about 50%. And the boss was down to 6% when the last person was <laughs> was still standing. That was hilarious. Um, uh, and in fact, I had much better time not killing it that way than, than I would have if we had just done a textbook run. Regardless, yeah. that was awesome. I, you know, I also, in fact, I think I have it in my, in here in my inventory. No, I think I left it in legacy storage. I went and bought that new weapon tuning off the GTN because it wasn't that oh, expensive. Oh, did you? Yeah, it was less less than two million. I think it's almost down to almost one million on Jedi Covenant right now. So I went I and bought it. I saw one for one point three million, but I thought, is there just one right now, or are there or are there two? There's two. Are there different ones? There's the lightning, there's two, and there's the uh, whatever defective weapon, broken weapon. Yeah, broken weapon. That was the one that I saw that was cheaper. Yeah. But I didn't think I wanted a broken weapon. The lightning one is like twenty million. I got it, but it does not I have no weapon tuning slot in my current blasters that my mercenary is carrying around, so I was a little disappointed. I can't use it. Although I guess we'll talk about an option to give them feedback on that in the news. Now an Imperial News Network report. So first off in the news, the character transfer discount down to 90 cartel coins is done. So that is wrapped up. It's back up to, what, 1,000 cartel coins now to do a... Mm -hmm. Yeah, 1,000 cartel coins within region. And I think it's 1,500 if you want to 
go from region to region, that's meaning right. North America to EU. Which was not even possible before, so that's that's new as yes. well, which is nice. I surprisingly, e -E I did remember at the last minute, like with an hour to go, to go <laughs> transfer my oh, right, my Marauder. <laughs> I was supposed to remind artificer. you. I, I'm useless for that. Yes, so my my artificer is back. I can now make. <laughs> I probably won't make anything, but I I can. Oh, I remember what I needed <laughs> it for it was that crafting week for conquest, making the, the, the war supply yeah. component that only artificers can make. That's right. Um, also, well, speaking of, you mentioned the forum thread. There is a forum thread up for um, asking what weapons you would like to see weapon tuning slots on. So um, I, I imagine that's to help them sort of prioritize the process of getting them put on weapons that are out there. Eric did pop into the thread and post that... Um, there currently will not be any weapon tunings for Vibrosaurs, and the, apparently the model for Vibrosaurs has some unique limitations that they haven't worked through yet. They still need to figure that out, and it's uh, just it's not in the current what's currently on the the drawing board for weapon tuning. So they, they didn't say they would never do it, but it's not there's not a plan for it right now. So Vibrosaurs. Yes, so I will post on that thread, or maybe everyone else can do it for me and say, Max needs it on the Kingpin Blaster because it <laughs> would be so tedious to find another blaster. I don't even know how yeah, I get these there ones. There are but... no other blasters. That's, that's true. Um, but I do I, I, I do like that weapon tuning because I was just noticing. I, I get a kick for some reason out of the so uh, the damaged weapon theme. Stavis in the, in the chat room uh, reminded me that it was called Damaged Weapon. I ride the the Harati Scrapper, which is the damaged speeder, where sparks coming off it mm -hmm. and smoke coming out the back. The armor I wear is the damaged armor, which is uh, what is this called? It's the energized Tri triumvirate. Tri yeah, the energized triumvirate. So when you go into battle stance, it's got sparks After all, coming you are off the of gray. it and light. You know, spark sparks and smoke coming off of the armor so then having my weapons match is entirely appropriate so yeah go ahead and post in that thread and let them know that the whatever weapon whatever weapon max is carrying needs it <laughs> kingpin's blaster <laughs> they should just check you know their inventory to see what max got and then just add that yeah that goes without saying um also they did post also that the people who are having problems summoning Bodar, apparently some people who have completed the internal championship um, and have completed everything, they go back to talk to Bodar and, and they still can't summon him or whatever. So that particular problem, just the only news on it is that it's under investigation. Yes. I have not seen it myself, but it is under investigation. So I guess post in that thread or let them know the situation in which you are having that problem if you are and then finally they did make a note during the week which i was somewhat amused by that the smuggler chapter three completion achievement problem that they had is fixed however it's only fixed if you haven't yet had the problem but we're about to have the problem <laughs> so if you had not yet completed chapter three but we're, are, we're about to complete chapter three or are now from this point forward going to complete chapter three on a smuggler, then it's fixed. For anybody that actually had the problem, yeah, it's not yet fixed. So, Right. <laughs> if you, you didn't have the problem, but we're about to have the problem, you're golden. Yes. If you had the problem and it was not, and if you had the problem, it is not yet fixed, <laughs> but will be on June 28th there. So it, it, they did right. say it'll be fixed on June 28th. Yeah. In guild and community news, especially community news, a couple things. I did do the Galactic Gamers Coalition podcast this past Saturday. Tio will be editing it up and pushing it out this week sometime. That was a fun time. I had uh, I had a good time with with those guys as as one does. They are a blast. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to listening to it. So it was Tio and Chill plays. Um, uh, Roy Brian from Bad Feeling Podcast. So, I think it, I think it was Roy. Let me let me do, I'll have to double check on the name. But he's uh, from that new podcast. Oh, see, I'm I'm messing up the name. Give me give me just a second. I'll 
I'll, I'll, I'll look it back up and then I'll edit it after because I certainly want okay because he was very cool and I did have fun chatting with him they just started up a new podcast as well which sounds awesome and those guys are doing a good job so I'm glad to have any we're always glad to have new podcasters in the community it is it's awesome for all yep. of us um so yeah that was uh night k-n-i-t-e is his is his uh gamer name and it's he's doing uh have a nice day cast um right which sounds have a nice day cast very cool check it out yes check check that out um yes what do you what else in in community news Seema? well um i was talking to max when we were getting set up about this character on um uh darvanis here who's just called minoc and i had been wondering you know for a week and a half why he was there and what he was there and all this stuff but um yeah he's a reference to you know our jar 75 in the chat room clued us in that he's a reference to um the owner of the website Wynox, minoc's den and he was at the uh, the New York Cantina, but he did, he makes awesome, um, well, I would say cosplay items and everything else. Yeah, like the, those masks right there. And, I mean, if you go and look at his site, it's it's just phenomenally interesting. He makes helmets and masks. And, uh, and if you click on the picture of one of them, a lot of them have uh, the background, in, including the... the um, the step drawings that he made to put the stuff together. And Minoc, the NPC, is carrying that uh, sword that you just saw on the screen. It's like the, the NPC is carrying like a, it's like a black sword, but it's got a curved blade and a curved, I don't know what they call it when there's like another little blade coming out, but I, <laughs> I was just flabbergasted by this website. So yeah, it's Minoc's Den. I would totally recommend you check it out. Your, your jaw will hit the desk. Yes, so many so many layers of cool. It's this this guy is awesome. His website is awesome. He's done these props. Here's a picture of him with Charles Boyd and and uh and and uh and Ben Irving. Oh, there's Ben Irving. Um he's done I think he might even have done a mask for Eric Mosco on when Eric did his his super long stream. But these props that he makes are just amazing and it's certainly it's certainly amazing stuff, and it's really cool to see him recognized with having this character Minox standing here in in the game, which now makes yeah. sense why this dude, right. this dude named Minox. <laughs> is, I'm is so glad out. I understand. I'm not only like glad that I understand it now, but for it to be such an awesome reference too. It's like yeah, yeah, that made my day. Yeah, exactly. That's that's one of the coolest things I've seen in a while. And then finally, I'll I'll keep mentioning it because I like it so much. Snave and the Ultimate Red Star 1v1 PvP tournament tournament championship will be Saturday, July 2nd on the Red Eclipse server. You can look that up. That's the sixth time that they're going to run it. And in addition to being a very cool 1v1 tournament event that you could participate in, it's also an, an excellent an eSport quality event to watch uh, when Snave streams it and does the commentary and play-by-play. Uh, we've also been having plenty of fun in our guild, LA Yacht S. Mandatory fun night continues to go great. Our four ops nights, in addition to that, are going great. And we had a couple people jump in from the the chat room who are watching our ride along stream tonight and came and came and ran with us. I'm I'm always happy to see that happen on our Tuesday nights. Yes, um, definitely. I'm wondering though, Seema. <laughs> You know, <laughs> if you're not in AIA and you'd like to be, that can be arranged. If you'd like to join us on Jedi Covenant, um, just log in and um, join the channel called AIE LFO. Um, evenings are best. And just say hi, and we can get you invited to the guild. Um, we have guilds on both sides, imp and pub side, and we're part of a larger gaming community, um, which is a family-friendly multi-gaming group. So... Uh, we do have a website at aie-guild.org, so you can check us out there, too, if you want to just do some reading first, or if you're interested in some other games, looking at those. Yep, a lot of AIE is right now checking out um, Overwatch, of course. It's 
So that's that's yep. obviously been Overwatch, a fun thing. The new I haven't hotness. Really been able to get into it myself too much, but it's a thing. It is yeah. popular. <laughs> it's. I would think you might enjoy it if you would get into it because it's isn't it totally isn't it like mostly like an arena PvP game? Yes, but it's first person shooter, which that's yes, that's it's a first person shooter, but it's like team against team, and that's all, and it's that's yep. that's the entire play yep. of it. Yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. So it's it's classic first person shooter team team v team with special but there's no abilities. Solo play that, at all. I mean, uh, nope, nope. So it's it's team play, and you can switch out characters as soon as you die. So you're constantly switching characters to rebalance your team. And there's support roles, tank tankish roles, and DPS ish roles. So it it there is some strategy in putting together the team, and then as you encounter the other team and get killed, you can readjust your team to to get around their team, and it's it's very cool idea, but it's also sort of Twitch first person shooter type stuff, which I'm I'm not as as enamored with as third person third person view and rpg ish more um PvP mm -hmm. as well. yeah i gotcha i bought it but i haven't played it but i bought it because i wanted to pet baby winston yeah well there is that yeah uh, um i mean you know priorities pets 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 yes i know i know you you like you like it to pets <laughs> we'll have to do mm -hmm. a, a separate pet podcast at some point but not tonight <laughs> Tonight we are going to talk no. about we're going to talk about an, our next preview into the future. Difficult to see. Always in motion is the future. Yes, the future is always in motion, and Ben Irving and and those guys gave us another preview this week in the June producers live stream. So not a ton of stuff, but a couple interesting things did come out. So we'll we'll walk through it. Do you want to give us a, a rundown, Seema, of what the overall agenda looked like and some of the things they kicked yeah, off? Yeah, it was with? it was similar to um, what they've done in the past. They start with a state of the game, um, then they went through the subscriber rewards for the upcoming month, but then they did all announce a new event coming, Dark Side versus Light Side, which we'll talk a little bit more about. There's not too much detail, but they did talk about it for a bit, and then. They talked about the next chapter, chapter 15, the Gemini Deception, which is coming on June 28th. And June 28th, I believe that this is how it works. June 28th is the early release with um, June 30 being the regular release. So I think that's how they do the dates, not the other way around. Um, so, yeah. And they announced, too, that uh, the recruitment mission for that chapter is going to be Gus Tano. So that's a lot of people looking forward to that because he is hilarious. Yes. Yeah, so we'll we'll, we'll get to that by the end and, and chat about that a little bit. I'll get your thoughts on, on Gus in a, in a second here, Seema. But I guess let's kick it off. So State of the Galaxy, they did talk about... Um, uh, they talk about Eric Musco's marathon stream and and how that went i didn't i actually didn't watch it so i i, I heard a I lot did. about it i did i watched it. a did few you? i watched uh two or three hours of it um nice and i then then i had to go do other stuff so and that was towards the beginning so it wasn't i guess it got, <laughs> which makes sense it got progressively crazier but by the end of the stream i guess just he and his boss were the only ones left in the building so they started doing more and more giveaways i i think it was a in general, it was a good event, and he, yeah. Um, yeah. The ongoing joke when I was watching it was that he kept using his AOE on, like, one or zero mobs. <laughs> As one does. Why, why would you As not? As one does, yes. What, was, what class was he but playing? But he was a very good sport about it, everything, yeah. What class was he playing? I think it was remember? a good thing for people who don't know, I mean, like me, who don't know anything about him other than just his presence on the forums and the live streams and stuff. And so made him more of a 3d person, you know, to spend some time like that. So it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's always a good thing. Uh, also in the, in the state of the galaxy, they talked about, Oh, they talked about the grand chance cubes. Yeah. And so th what they did is they got rid of Brown's items out of cartel packs and 
changed it all to this grand chance cube, which gives you a chance to get actually some pretty good things. And if you do get an armor armor out of grand chance cube, you're getting a full armor set. So it's cool what you could get out of a grand chance cube, but people were disappointed that they weren't getting new items. New they bronze were just items. getting yeah. old stuff. So now they're going to do a thing where basically it's a 50, 50 chance to get a new bronze item versus a grand chance cube. And uh, mixed feedback. So I, I, from watching the stream, when I was actually watching the, the live stream, it seemed like the feedback in general was pretty positive in chat. People were saying, oh, that's pretty cool. Anything that's, you know, less of those chance cubes I'm happy about. I wouldn't mind getting, a, you know, some of those bronze items back. That's awesome. But then I've talked to other people anecdotally. Um, and the plural of anecdote is, of course, data. So my conclusion is <laughs> that <laughs> the course. entire rest of the community uh, isn't right. as happy with that uh, and isn't as impressed by those bronze items, which were mostly junk. Is it that past. people just don't like the chance cubes at all? I think people are, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think people don't like the chance cubes, but people also, yeah, maybe other people, <laughs> everyone else, doesn't like just the, the bronze, the bronze items, which is like that armor, like, you know, Alderaan senatorial robes of crap, which... <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, you know, robes of... You know... I mean, I get it that you don't want bronze items at all. You'd rather have all gold, of course, but... Yeah. I'd, yeah. Or it's, platinum. Yeah. So, you know, s smuggler's pants of plainness. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Glad I got this. And glad, you know, glad I my bronze item was... You know, of this lame set, which I don't even want, I got the bracers, which you don't even see. So, so it, unless you get the full set anyway, it doesn't even unlock in your collections. It's like right. whoop de doo. So I'm I wasn't all that impressed with the bronze items, but I don't open packs at all, so I can't I can't talk. But I mean, now if you now that wouldn't happen in a chance cube, right? Because you would get the whole. Right. Set. So if you Isn't open it up out of a chance okay. cube, you do. You get a full set. Yeah. You get a full armor set. So even if it's yeah. the, you know, the smuggler's pants of plainness, the smuggler's outfit of plainness, you're getting at least getting the whole set. So there's that. So it sounds like they're trying to hit some kind of happy medium, but they're people are still not medium. So it's a sad medium, but it's medium. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but a sad medium. <laughs> They did mention the Cantina Tour 2016 Star Wars Celebration in July. You don't need a ticket ticket to get into the the Cantina event. They're gonna have a, I guess, it's a big space that they're gonna have it at. I'm sure you do need extra tickets and stuff to get into Star Wars Celebration, though. Yeah, but you don't have to somehow r wrangle a Star Wars Celebration ticket to get into the Cantina. It'll be outside of the celebration. And they said, and that's in London. And then the next one month or two after that, they haven't nailed down the time yet. Um, and they, they're they not completely confirmed, but they think that they're going to do one in New York uh, following the London mm -hmm. canteen event. And they, on the side, they sort of brushed over the Eternal Championship contest participation, which was fine. There's still obviously a little bit of controversy and, and hurt feelings over how some of that came down. And how some of the disqualifications went, but it's a thing. Is you know somewhat of a random contest, regardless. I they probably should have just done a drawing, but that's okay. Then we can sort of <laughs> let bygones <laughs> yeah, be I mean, bygones. I think they should respond to the to the um, to the community about that, but the live stream, the producer live stream, was probably not the spot. Correct, probably not. Uh, and then they said. Yeah, and then they talked a little bit about Chapter 14, which we talked yeah, about last which... week. Yes, we did. Yeah, did. And I'll say that I, again, that I, <laughs> this is the one where you, the Alliance recruit, um, Alliance alert is to get, or not get, Brunark. Yes. Who's a bloody, bloody revengeful soul. Not revengeful, but he does have his own way of looking at things. So yeah, again, we're, Try, I, I know we spoiled a whole bunch of stuff last week, but we're, we're avoiding it a little bit this week. But just so you know, it's it's easy to not get him. <laughs> yes, it is easy <laughs> to not get let's, him, let's, right? Let's put it that way. Uh, what else? 
they they did the uh i guess it's got um people like this they did their they featured a few people from the community That's starting good. with um nastasia fun on twitter who does lara benico alana lana benico cosplay and if you go and look at it her she does look just like lana it's it is pretty phenomenal yeah um good yeah so good costume she got does does her hair that way and then she posed herself her her face doesn't as much but um but she, i mean she's very uh, she's an attractive young woman i mean not, nothing against her face <laughs> But uh, she does the, the the costume and the hair really well, and then does the poses that look exactly like Lana. So that that looks that yeah. looks really cool. And then she's been at a couple of the uh, sort of the Comic Cons and Star Wars events around, and even met up with some of the other cosplayers and posed with them and and that kind of thing. You can see a picture of here posing. This is actually her posing, I think, with um, the guy on Twitter who who does uh, uh, Revan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right because I think name? I saw that picture too. I kept, I, now I'm forgetting his name, but he's he he posts on, on Twitter all the time um, of him in his Revan cosplay, which actually looks uh, very good as well. As you can see, they also highlighted a couple things, and they tried to, to do a little bit of variety in community highlights. Yeah, Cyber Elf. That's his name. Uh, thank you, chat room. Thank you, Swotor Ethcom. But I liked how they sort of did a broad spectrum of types of community contributions. So they did her for uh, Nastasia for cosplay. Then they talked about SWOTOR family and a thread that gets put together every Thursday on Twitter where people, well, you explain this, Seema, because I. <laughs> yeah, it's called hashtag there on Thursday. And. If you just look at that on Twitter, it's 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 people who posting screenshots of their character with Theron or just Theron um, with a, a statement about what was going on or what they feel about it or whatever, and it's 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 entertaining. And there's also a um, yeah, there's Theron Thursday and Miralan Monday, I think. So you were saying it's 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 mostly dedicated to. There's a lot Very of fans. Uh, there's, yeah, there's a lot of. Um, I, I actually was educated by this thread because I didn't realize that Theron was such an object of of you know, so desired as a romance um, object. So a lot of it is our shots of him and female characters in their most loving moments. Not not in bad taste at all. Just mm. romance. <laughs> well, there's. There's that. That's a thing. So, <laughs> so apparently that's happening. <laughs> I did not there, romance there Theron. So, and did you? Did you romance Theron, Tima? I did not. No, because you were pining for Torian. <laughs> yeah, my 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 bounty hunter is a married woman. Oh, that, see, you're you're quite loyal. I, that's my RP. I heard that if you do. Res resume your relationship i th i think it was with torian or there, uh, maybe a couple other places that people noticed it as well i didn't see it but there was some message that was popping up that said if you're going to resume your relationship with torian it will stop any other romance relationships you currently have in progress so like if if since you were frozen you started a little thing on the side with theron it, it seems like from a gameplay perspective, it puts the brakes on everything going on with Theron if you're going to go back to Torian. That's something to keep an eye out for. Um, and then finally... They also... Um, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Bad Feeling Podcast. You do it. Yeah, yeah. so Chuck, Chuck and Brian, Bad Feeling Podcast. So they did the, the cosplay. They did the SWOTOR family, which is an awesome Twitter group that's been around for forever and uh is and and the couple things that pop up on on twitter and they did a podcast bad feeling podcast so that's cool and they specifically called out um because in the month of may um brian and chuck did a series where they interviewed people from bioware because they're in austin also so they were able to go over there and get time with people so especially their episodes in may you could go back and listen to them with some good interesting interviews with bioware people yep and Chuck and we we love Chuck and Brian so 
Um, glad They're the see best. Those guys being recognized. Subscriber rewards. They did talk about subscriber rewards as well. So the July subscriber rewards are coming up. People seem to to not all be all that impressed with the July subscriber reward, which is still cool, but it's just up. I am. Do you like it? <laughs> I love it. Yes. In fact, um, that poster we had before the um, the Voss embassy, whatever, yep. whatever poster. I love that poster. I, I have it in one of my strongholds. I just use it like wallpaper. And not because I was filling up slots necessarily. I just really liked it. In fact, I, would, I wouldn't mind a poster in this style or in various different styles, but the poster looking things of all my companions over the hologram versions that I have now. I mean, I just love these posters. So there, there's my input in the poster situation. I like it. I like it too. And I think it looks really cool. It's, I think the art is really well done on it and I'll be happy to have it in my stronghold. In fact, of the things we've gotten so far, like I've got like the helmet just, you know, shoved in a, in the, in the bank somewhere, <laughs> this yeah. I'll have hanging up and probably see this and, in, in, you know, m more than anything else that, that we've gotten so yeah, far. That's a good point. Um, the jetpack was probably the, the most useful, I guess, probably for people in general, but yeah, I, I use it every day. Uh, that vibro sword looks pretty cool too, in terms of the HK weapons. Although now we know that vibro swords will not get weapon tuning, so there's that too. And of course, they said the uh, the usual early access to chapter XVI <laughs> if you are a subscriber by July first. So there's that. Right. Then they so talked chapter about... fourteen and fifteen this month, and then sixteen in July. Yeah, okay. yeah. Which I guess oh, see, moving along weird. in a pretty good clip. So if if it's if be a subscriber by July first, are are we getting it then the first week in July, chapter sixteen? I don't think so because we're getting chapter fifteen on 28th. June twenty eighth. Right. Yeah. You you raise a you raise a good question. So I don't know when we're getting it. We're getting it sometime in July, but it's 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 weird that every time they said be a subscriber by the first of the month, you were getting it within that. You were getting the next chapter within that first week. So well, I'm sure it's going to be within the month. But yeah, that, it would be weird if it was when the. I'd be fine with it if it were during the first week. But that would that would be really early. I would I would think. Well, we'll see what they do. Uh, and then they talked about a new event that they're going to start up. And I, I'm gonna have to to go ahead and do the do the overview, Seema. Tell me what you okay. think of it so far, because I I got most of it. Um, but it seemed there's there's some interesting things they were just sorting on the saying on the side that they didn't explain in too much detail. So I need to read into so it a little bit. So the, they're they're introducing a new event. It's the dark side versus light side event. It's going to be a multi month event. So it's going to either have like different tiers, or it's going to have events within the event. Um, and by tears, we mean that lots of people will be crying over how it's handled poorly and, and that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, no. Is that not what um, So <laughs> it's going to require us to choose dark side or light side. There's actually more info coming probably in the next couple of weeks because they said three weeks from the live stream. Um, so in two and a half weeks or so. Um, but when we play the game, some of all the dark side choices and light side choices will, will count towards things. Um, one of the new companions will get as reward. It, it, whether whether the dark side wins or the light side wins affects what that companion is and how that companion's abilities, whether it's a light-based companion or a dark-based companion, um, which will change their appearance, their personality, their combat abilities, etc. Um, and they did say, I know people are saying that it's going to be no contest because, of course, dark side is going to win, but they did say that they looked at over the last six months of play history and light side choices dominated to the tune of 59% to 41% light versus dark. So I, I, it's interesting, but, um, when I was, when they, when Eric in the thread where Eric put this summary of the, the live stream, people were asking questions about Lark this event and they were asking things like how will neutral characters be affected like what if you sometimes choose light and sometimes sometimes you know where's my prize for being the most gray yeah 
Um, they asked know. whether light side, dark side crew missions will count, the, the diplomacy missions. They asked, is it across all your characters or can you have a character that's very dark and be contributing to dark winning and a character that's very light contributing to light winning or what? How is that all going to work? And then even somebody asked, should we stop doing story for now or what? Because, you know, am I, if, I, if I answer a light side, dark side question, am I using up points now that I wish I would have been able to spend after the contest starts? So lots of interesting questions. So we'll look forward to more info coming out. I think it's, I think it's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be different than how we're thinking of it now. Enough different that we'll go, oh, okay, I see. At least I hope anyway. Right. Right, so they they were pretty dramatic in the way they talked about this being a, an, a very large event uh, across a long period of time and getting a lot of community involvement and, you know, this sort of choice choice battle back and forth. And it will be interested, interesting to see how that shakes out. The idea that a new companion a brand new companion that we've never had before is sort of what right. it sounded like that would, would yeah. be developed as part of this. And it will be dependent on the, the sort of which side wins by the end. And, and by win, it's, it's not even necessarily that anyone's going to lose. Well, I guess if you want, if you want the light side version of the companion and, and the dark, the dark wins, I think everyone's still going to get the companion. It's not like you lose. lose yes. Something. No, I think so too. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think there's going to be, you know, half of the population walking around with an extra companion. That would be funny. Right. But yeah. And I think they also talked, is this the part where they were also talking about d very interesting rewards better than they ever had before with, you know, too many superlatives on, on, on the end of you know, it. You know, when I, I don't so. know, when they say stuff like that, it just kind of rolls off my back. Yeah. So I think they're, at least they're pretty impressed themselves with what this is going to look like. So be, be careful with the expectations, but and they're pretty excited about it, it sounds like. So we'll. Be and that, some that. people were asking if it's going to be a repeating event, and other people were answering that, well, of course it will be, because all their re events are reusable and blah, 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 blah. But I don't know. I mean, multi-month, I don't know. It might be just a one-time thing. Yeah, I would not think this would be a repeating event in that way. It doesn't I, sound like... My first reaction is no. It doesn't sound like an in-game event as much as a, a meta event that looks at things going on in the game and then outside the game is where sort of like the overall score and discussion and view of what's happening in the contest happens. So it's not like the Gree come to town and you do some Gree things. It's like you play the game and they say, you know, they're looking at Lart, di, Lart, di, Lart, di, <laughs> Dark Light decisions in Flashpoints. And then for that month, they do all the statistics for Light, Dark decisions in Flashpoints and add them all up as a meta analysis of what's going on. And that's it. So we'll I see. I mean, another thing that people were asking on the forums, is it going to be another thing where, like, let's say, is it going to be server v server? And are, if you're on a small server, are you just out of the game then or whatever? And I don't think so. I think it's going to be across the entire population everywhere. So I don't think there's going to be any, you know, if like conquest where if you're in a large guild, there's a clear advantage. It's going to be like the economy where no one person can really affect it. It's, it'll go, it'll go in its own its own path. It'll make its own path. Whether the community chooses more dark side points versus light side points, I think it's going to be that kind of thing where nobody can really control. Yeah, that's interesting. The tiers of rewards, though, does make it sound like... So maybe regardless of whether light or dark wins, you will get tiers of rewards based on how much you participate. So that's potentially the way that those those tiers would work, which I hope. So the the people that still want to to go dark and play dark and cheer on the dark side can still get all of the rewards, even if the light side wins, for example. Um, I hope that's the case. Yeah. I don't know. I just 
to me that just sounds like whoever plays the most flashpoints <laughs> whoever runs black know. talent we'll the most times but then, <laughs> yeah. but then if it's like if you if you get um you know if if you if you collect a thousand you know light side or dark side points over the course of this month then you're you know you're up to tier six but if you only collect 800 then you're in tier five or whatever so i maybe, maybe that's it i so it may be whichever side you know light versus dark you know just runs the, the you know black talent over and over and over again but again i'm i'm betting it won't matter by by the end so you know so what if dark side wins if you were playing you know if you were gathering light side points it's probably not going to matter. You'll just get the dark side companion then at the end. The chat room is suggesting yeah. that it's going to be more, what, like 204 blue non moddable gear <laughs> is it? Yeah. as the rewards <laughs> right. and another Rancor. <laughs> right. They haven't really, maybe, you know, hit the mark on rewards yet. So we'll just, I'll just put a pin in that. We shall see. And finally, they wrapped up by talking about chapter X. V chapter XV. There we go. <laughs> Coming yep. up yep. on June 28th. And uh, not to have too many spoilers just by knowing the name of the, of the chapter, but <laughs> we are up to Gemini deception and, and what goes on um, with the whole idea of the Gemini system that we've been hearing about for a few chapters now being the sort of central to how the eternal fleet operates. And if you take the eternal fleet out of the picture, then what does that do to Arkin's ability to control the, the rest of the galaxy? In theory, it hamstrings him quite a bit. So there's that. Uh, any comments? I wish they would have called it something else. Than Gemini? <laughs> yes, because that is very immersion breaking for me. It's, it's an acronym it's just, though, isn't it? I hope so. Oh, but because it's a Gemini. Because it be means twin and Roman? Scorpio and this other woman. Yeah, because it's, it's also, Earth. Yeah. It's an Earth constellation based. name. Yeah, yeah. true. That's... That didn't exist. Well, whatever. Is that Greek or Roman? Gem the Gemini and and the astrological signs. Well, regardless, yes, I, I get yes. that. Yes. But yeah, you're right. There is sort of that that twin theme going on there a little bit too. Then they threw in the teaser video, which was interesting. And uh, and finally, the, the, the good, well, I think the best part <laughs> was they talked about the companion <laughs> that's coming with Chapter 15, yes. which is Gus. And there was a huge uproar yeah. from at least the chat room for the live stream that ev everyone really likes Gus Tuno, which I do as well. Yeah. I do. I mean, and yes, I do think though a lot of people in the chat room can go yay for Gus, but they still want Mako more. True. Or whoever whoever their their favorite is that they're still lacking. So I, I I wouldn't go too far with that. But yeah, Gus is he's a popular guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a good <laughs> unique character in in his own right. He's funny in the screenshot that they have. Let me let me see if they put it in the stream, but. It showed him back uh, holding a lightsaber. So the, if you if you remember Gus's backstory, if you ever played the smuggler, Gus had some training as a Jedi, but didn't really make it. <laughs> so he he kind of washed out, yeah. But because he had just a little bit of that kind of training and a little bit of knowledge of, of Jedi, he decided that he was going to use that for his smuggling, scamming, <laughs> Uh, scheming ways in the future, and that's where you meet him in the smuggler story, which is is quite amusing. Um, <laughs> I, I I just really like some of the dialogue when you first meet Gus as as some of the best stuff. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how he turns up. We'll see what his recruitment mission is like. I'm looking forward to it. It's a humorous character, and it's always fun to have that kind of humor in an MMO um, injected into the. You know, a, a well done humorous character that's still within the Star Wars universe and fits very well in in theme. So yeah, I mean, I think it's similar to people, people's um, enjoyment of Galt when he came back. The Galt and Vet thing together was humorous. Interesting. Uh, anything else then to to wrap up what we saw with this live stream? 
No, I I just I'm kind of excited about this poster. That's the number that's one my thing. Deal. That's, <laughs> that, that's your number one. I mean, I'm excited about the dark side versus light side event, but that's in the future future. Yeah. Yep. Poster's cool. I'm uh, I'm interested to see what happens with dark side, light side, and I'm interested to be able to use ro more Roman numerals to wrap up uh, all the way through chapter XVI by the end of the summer. <laughs> and then I will... I will say everything in Roman numerals um, from now on um, for all future <laughs> it, chapters. Well, well, I mean the whole Roman numerals too. But anyway, the um, it'd be funny if chapter sixteen comes along and this just, we just get all our companions back. There's like this parade of companions. They're gonna have to do something. They can't. You, uh, I guess maybe this is a topic for another time. But do you think there's a chance by the end of chapter sixteen that companions may still be missing? Oh yeah. I guess there's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. Uh, well, yeah, that because would be terrifying. That we would know be terrifying. who's coming in chapter 15, and that leaves chapter 16 for all the rest. Well, that's the companion recruitment, but that doesn't mean that you, more that's companions true. might not show there's up. Still, there's, there's still more than, there's still quite a number that haven't come back. Like Captain Peter says in the chat, no, no Akavi, we know there's no Mako, there's no Alara. That's true. And it's um, the companion recruitment, and most of the companions that have no come back Lieutenant Ereso, no Zenith, no. Yeah. Anyway. Huh. True. Interesting. Disturbing. Now I'm disturbed. You've disturbed me. <laughs> <laughs> I I find my lack of companions disturbing. I mean, are we gonna like find a bunker on some planet, and they're they'll all be in there? They're all. Risha. They're all yeah. At some cantina. Risha. Having Skadge, a party. Ereso, Yeah, I mentioned. They're all, uh, they're all drinking at some bar, pining for the fjords. <laughs> pining for the fjords. Yeah, so we'll see. I guess that that would that would disturb me to not have them back by the end of chapter sixteen. So, we'll see how that goes. Jasa, Kira, yeah. Uh, Nadia, uh, shut up, Nadia. <laughs> Nadia. How can I forget Nadia? <laughs> All right. With... Yeah, that's a good. That's a good thought. Captain Peter says perhaps there'll be other side quests to do after the chapters. Maybe, maybe that's what will tide us over. Is that to would be, be a good way to handle it. Be getting our companions in between yeah. that and the yeah. next season, which will come eventually at at some point, hopefully in theory as well. All right, but I I think with that we can wrap it up for this week and this chapter of uh, C I V. <laughs> no, it would be. Uh, Roman numerals for one one hundred and forty six would be Arabish numerals C I L C X L no it'd be C X L V I that's what it would be there you go <laughs> so E P C C X L V I is ready to head out and break a leg because that's humorous thanks to all of you for joining <laughs> us on newoverlords dot com on iTunes YouTube or live on Twitch. We will stream again next Tuesday night on twitch.tv slash new overlords around 10, 15, 10, 30 p.m. Central after our mandatory fun night on Jedi Covenant with Elea Yacht Est. Please follow us on Twitter at Max the Gray and at AIE SEMA. Please subscribe on YouTube and please come find us on Jedi Covenant and ask us for an AIE Guild invite. We would love to have you. And we will talk to you soon. Later, everyone. <laughs>